Hello everyone. Today we're showing a way of um, making a grid structure and then on this grid stru structure have several um, like rectangles um, who will have different colors to um, in order for them to be like in this, uh, like distinguishable like being one having a color of um, like red and the other one being more and on blue or something and this will be like a whole grid structure that will be like repeating itself and has a certain parametric uh, way to it and we're going to use this with um, Rhino and Grasshopper and the Grasshopper used the plugin human which is able to export certain um, uh, characteristics that you want to apply to in the custom preview for example very easily. So um, we're going to start first of all with a um, simple grid. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you take. Uh, in this case, take the um, rectangular, and uh, maybe you want to like change the primers a little bit. Doesn't really matter actually at all. And um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to extrude them uh, to the. We're going to make maybe the box. Um, which might be more sufficient if we tick the box, yeah. And we will, whoops, and we will uh, use a series of numbers um, that, or maybe a range might be better, and a range according to the list length of the cells that we have. And um, we're having now like different cells. And we're going to use also a graph in order to make it more look like uh, like something, how do you say, it? like something more parametric. So we're going to use this, put it in here. We might also like take a multiplier in order for them to be like more um, um, or more or less, um, yeah, how do you say, the, the increment of it. And we're going to take this in here. So that's not too much. I think if we could flatten that, it would be like more random. So yeah, now we have different our different structure here, and we're going to um, use uh, the custom preview as well as the gradient tool. So we would have different numbers as well. And with the custom preview, we're able to um, use different colors and shapes on those things. So for example, in this case, now we have a very nice thing and we can also like change it around here. The problem with that is if I cannot bake this, it's not impossible to bake. And if it would bake that one, I would only get like the typical normal, um, like same color, and it wouldn't render or it wouldn't display in this way anyway. So there's this, there's where the plugin Human is very useful. It can basically take those parameters and put them into the Grasshopper um, geometry, into the Rhino geometry. And the first, so the thing we're gonna do is like we have to use um, the creation, and as well as the uh, document. Um, section. So the from the creation, the bake geometry will be like the final one we need to use. It bakes a geometry that we want to have automatically with the push of the button, this then, uh, into Rhino. And but we need to also create the attributes. The attributes are made with uh, the attributes here. And the thing as well, we need to create as well a um, material. So the material will be created here with a uh, diffuse layer here. And we're going to use the material name and we put it uh, into the name of the material. Um, yes, correctly. Ah, and we also need to, the material needs to also have a name as well for order for it to function. So now we have our object, object attributes and um, we're going to use those attributes and put them into the attributes that we want to bake. And we're going to use the geometry that we want to bake it into here as well. So now we have 
to try it out. And right now it doesn't show up correctly, but if you switch to the rendered view, or I think the shaded view as well, not the shaded, but like the rendered view, it shows up that the geometry will be the same. And for example, if we would now we would like to uh, simply render it out in um, in V-Ray, you see that the that the rendering will be the same as it was in the um, Rhino viewport. So that's really neat. And obviously, we can now um, maybe change the change the presets. There was also like. Um, you can also add your own presets as well to it. You can change the size here a little bit. So, I'm gonna bake that one. You can move it around. And um, it will also be possible to change those things as well, maybe for like a hexagonal uh, grid as well. So, we're going to use the hexagonal grid. And we're just gonna put all those things in here. And we just have to um, uh, control shift and put this in here. Um, well, no, this doesn't work because we have to extrude it instead because it's not a box anymore. And then we also need to like base Z, Z direction would be that one. So now we have our extruded um, hexagons, so I was going to cap them as well. It'll take a bit longer. Yeah, maybe going to make it a little bit more extreme how they're going to extrude as well. Like 50 to 50. And now we're going to. Oh, oh no, we, I used the wrong one. I just I just see. Wait. So now we need to <laughs> decrease that before it like, goes all over it. Um, we're going to use this as the C factor. I know it like, calculates a little bit because it might be like, more extreme. Yeah, it's okay. I also have to like, take in mind that um, the calculation time and the object attributes and um, Creating and modifying the data is also always takes a little bit of time. Change this one here. Hopefully, it won't take too long. Nice, it doesn't. And um, yeah, we're gonna maybe change to like a very nice rainbow pattern. And also, we could like flatten this in order for it to be more um, every, in every direction. Hopefully, it doesn't crash now. Yeah, okay, just uh, oh, I thought it would change direction. Okay. Um, Gonna bake this as well, and having a very nice like shape here. And now we again can just render it here. In this case, put the resolution a bit higher. So, so yeah, now it's building like it right now. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, it's a very nice way of putting um, custom geometry into the Rhino. Um, client and really work with that very sufficiently. It's very nice for like facades and stuff like those. So yeah, hope this was useful for you and uh, enjoy.